So in the overnight session, the market put in a breakout to a new all-time high. And at this point, heading into the open, we know that the buy side is dominant across multiple time frames. So heading into the open, our short-term bias is going to be neutral bullish, while the intermediate-term bias continues to be bullish. And the only reason that the short-term bias is marked as neutral bullish as opposed to bullish is that the market is a bit overextended to the upside and given that we have the Fed announcement due at 1 p.m. Central Time that could limit the upside range potential ahead of the Fed announcement. But otherwise, we know that the buy side is dominant and in control and unless we're seeing some very clear and obvious signs of intraday weakness, our focus will remain on the long side and we will need to exercise caution on the short side. And now heading into the open, we have the more aggressive area of support at 51 half to 54 half and continuing to hold above that zone would signal a strong market and it would be a confirmation that the buy side is still in firm control. A break below that area doesn't necessarily mean that the control is shifting to the sell side. It could still be a pullback within a larger upswing. But a break below 51 half would signal at least some short term weakness on the smaller time frame and bring the gap fill into play at 48 half. And then we have the initial support zone at 42 quarter to 45 quarter where buyers can be active. Now, given the strength that we've seen yesterday and in the overnight session, ideally, we want to see the market holding above 42 quarter to 45 quarter. And if the market's really strong, then it could even hold above the previous close and the pre-market support zone. So given that we're dealing with a market where we have bullish time frame alignment, it wouldn't be out of the ordinary to see buyers holding it above even the aggressive area of support of 51 half to 54 half. But because we have that Fed announcement at 1 p.m. Central Time and because the market might be a little bit overextended on the smaller time frame, we could get some balancing either above pre-market support or maybe ES pulls back to 48 half and then finds buyers there and then ideally even if we're seeing some intraday weakness we want to see buyers holding it above initial support if this breakout to a fresh all-time high is going to remain intact and result in range expansion to the upside now on the upside the only area of resistance we have is from the overnight session at 2960 to 61 quarter it's not a major area of resistance. It's simply the overnight high. And if this breakout to fresh highs is going to have follow through, then that zone can easily be taken out and we can get range expansion beyond the overnight high. So that is the market context heading into the open. And the big question is whether yesterday's breakout is now going to result in follow through and remain intact. If we're dealing with a very strong market, then ES can hold even above 51 half to 54 half. But in the event that we get a break below that area, ideally, we still want to see buyers holding it above the initial support zone if the breakout is really going to remain intact. And then 34.75 to 37.75 is an important area. And if that area gets taken out, then the entire breakout could fall apart. So that's the context heading into the open. Let's see if the buy side can maintain the control that we saw yesterday afternoon and in the overnight session. And we'll take it from there.